Hi everybody. I'm gonna do a uh, review slash teardown of a new set of Wi-Fi smart outlets that I received today. I uh, picked these up on Amazon. It was about 40 bucks with Prime and it is for, as it says here, Wi-Fi smart socket or as you also may know of them, a Wi-Fi smart outlet. This plugs right into your outlet, and then you can plug in a fan or a light or anything up to uh, up to about 10 amps. Yep, 10 amps max. And then you can control it through your phone, Android, iOS, whatever. Uh, they do tie into your Amazon Echo if you have one, or if you have a Google Home, it'll work with that as well. I'm always looking at new sockets because I use these a lot. Uh, they're very convenient for me. I have them all over the house. Up until now, I've been using the E-Tech City brand. These are great. I have no complaints about these except for their size. If you notice, the Amison outlet is a bit smaller. In fact, the nice thing about this, the benefit over the E-Tech City outlet, is that you can run two of these in your duplex outlet at the same time. With the E-Tech Cities, you can only fit one. This little nub on the bottom blocks all other access to the other outlet unless you just have a, you know, a small uh, two-pin plug, you know, like one of these kind. So that would, you know, it'll fit like that. But you couldn't put two E-Tech City plugs above and below each other. It just won't work. So I figured I'd try these out. Now before I plugged them in, I did have to uh, satiate my own desire to know what was inside. So I tried to open one up. I looked around. No stickers to remove. No seams. Like on the E-Tech City with the little hole that you can get a screwdriver in and pop them apart. So, I did what any, you know, normal, sane person would do. I got my angle grinder. Uh, that was after trying the uh, Arbor Press of Knowledge. The Arbor Press of Knowledge didn't do anything. So, I got the angle grinder. And you can see I went around the edge. Turns out these are probably sonically welded or heat welded. So after I cut that, I pulled that out, and then uh, you can see there's normally that button right there. And when I pulled the top off, here, I'll move that out of the way. This is what I found inside waiting for me. This is the uh, module right there. It is uh, ESP-based. It's using an ESP8266. These are great controllers. I have a lot of fun with these. I make all kinds of stuff with them. I even uh, put one inside my coffee maker to make my coffee maker Wi-Fi enabled. So that's the inside. It's uh, it's similar to the E-Tech City, actually. Uh, these, these are probably the closest I've seen. I have taken apart the Wemo and uh, some of the older RF type. And... Um, I would say this is probably about as good as you're going to get and still have a safe uh, and inexpensive option for a smart outlet. It's set up no problem. I went right into the app. You plug it in and you hold down the button for a few seconds and then this light will start flashing blue rapidly. Like blink, 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 blink. And at that point... You tell the app to search for the outlet, it finds it, and it linked it right up. It took, oh, I don't know, <clears throat> from plugging it in until it was working, I'd say it was probably, oh, it was less than a minute. It was maybe 20 to 30 seconds. You can see how this is built. They did a pretty nice job of uh, maximizing the uh, the parts and cost. These blades here, these look like they're uh, plated copper, and they uh, they feel good when you plug in. There's the outlet that I didn't cut open. And you can see that's that's pretty tight. So it's got a nice grip. Let's 
see if we can see it a little better. And you can see, like, that's just, it's pretty tight. The uh, ground goes straight through. It's soldered on. It goes right to that pin right there. This is, uh, this is kind of how it looked. Well, this is how it looked. Well, i got to get that light pipe out of the way. This is essentially how it looked when I opened it up, and then I desoldered those three points, and then pulled it out. Once I pulled it out, I could see that it was, you know, thermally welded or sonic welded. You can see the back just pushes in, and then they do something that solidifies that joint right there. So I guess what I should have done, and I even started kind of picking at the back, but it wouldn't have done me any good. So I figured I'd sacrifice one so that you all didn't have to. And let's look at this. Look at this in a little more detail. Let's, uh, let's zoom in so we can really go over it. So power obviously comes in. We'll start on the back. These two pins. This is the uh, neutral or common, depending where you are. And this is the hot. The hot does have a fuse. That little brown 10 amp fuse right there, little box fuse. After it goes through the fuse, one leg goes to the relay. The other leg of the relay goes to the output hot pin. You know, goes to that pin. So this and this are the same. Then to tap power for the control circuit and the Wi-Fi, there is a resistor right here. That looks like, uh, let's see, brown, black, black, silver. So that's a 0.1 ohm, maybe? I forget, but it's a low value. One, zero, zero, and I can't really tell if that's silver or gold. So that's either a, a 0.1 or a 0.01, it's probably 0.1 ohm. Well, either way, power goes through it, and then it goes to this bridge rectifier through a trace on the top that we can't really see. There is a, I'm trying to see if that's a class Y or if that's an MOV. I think that might be a class Y cap. I'm not really sure. It's can't really read it. Let's see if I can get some better light and then maybe I can read it. Still got a little bit of dust on it. So it is a. I think that's a capacitor. VA1. That might be an MOV. Maybe the protect and rush to the Wi Fi, maybe. To the uh, power supply for the Wi Fi. But then we have a 3.3 mic at 400 volt capacitor, and that is on the bridge output. So AC goes in, DC comes out at 150 volts or so, then that goes through to, now well, we can't see the pad on that side, but it goes, I'm trying to see if I can find it. It looks like it's that pad right there and then it goes through that inductor. Yeah. All right. And once it goes through the inductor, there is probably a chip right here. Yeah, this chip. This is probably creating the low voltage. That'd be my guess at least. Just from where everything is, we have another inductor. Yeah, two inductors, a capacitor, you have a chip here, and then there's another chip over here, but that's probably a regulator. So I suspect this is dropping the voltage down to the, let's see, this relay says it's a Y32FSS, so I don't know if that's 3.2 or 32 volt. I'll look that up. And I'll put it in the description. But it's creating, I imagine the uh, power supply is creating voltage for doing the coil. 
because something has to, you know. Uh, this is the program button. It all ties into the ESP chip. And let's uh, let's look at our connections on the bottom for the ESP chip. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I think just by looking at things, this one's probably ground. This one's going through to a pad right here, which I'm guessing is power in just from the location of things. I may look this module up. There's not a whole lot of uh, specifics on this particular module, but the chip is in ESP8266. It had this uh, marking on the back, uh, PT X3 version zero from uh, March 2017. But this is doing all the work, obviously. Power goes in here. This then talks to your router and then talks to your phone through their server setup. And then we probably have a... Uh, ah, okay. This is the control for the relay. There's the uh, res uh, transistor that's syncing the coil for the relay. And let's see, where does the base from that go? Through the top. Yeah. So I think this might be the output. Although if it was the output, I'd wonder why they don't just go right over. So maybe the output's one of these. But we're going to have the button, which is going to be this pin, is going to be pulling one of these down. Maybe that's what this is. Maybe this goes over to the button. And maybe this is power. I'm not really sure. It's kind of, I don't really want to take this one apart to reverse engineer it. Uh, only because there's really no reason. It's not cheaper to build one of these for, you know, 10 bucks a piece. Well worth it. Well worth it to buy. Now this one that I've already scrapped down, I will put it back in its housing. But I'll probably do, uh, have a cable come out instead of trying to cobble the top back on. That's neither here nor there. I took this apart to show you guys. So anyway, once it gets a signal to turn on, it fires that transistor, which then closes the relay, which lets the power go through the fuse, to through the relay to the output, and then turns on your fan or your light or you know whatever you have plugged into it that's rated to 10 amps. So, by and large, it's uh, it's a pretty nice outlet. I uh, I'm very happy with it. I recommended a friend of mine to get some, so I think he ordered some today. And I won't be replacing my E-Tech Cities anytime soon because you know these are these are great outlets. I have no complaints about them. But I'll probably be going with these from this point further, at least until I uh, find another brand out there that has the, uh, it's a little smaller or uh, a little nicer looking or something. I don't know. You know, I'm never happy. Always trying to, always trying to do something else. Well, there we go. Make a little stand by plugging it into its brother. So if you have any questions or if you have any comments, feel free to leave them in the description. I will put a link down there uh, to these if you're interested in getting some. If, uh, you want me to do anything specific with this one, if you have any ideas of what I could, I don't know, cram it into, you know, I could stick it inside a lamp or stick it inside, uh, I don't know, a, a pedestal fan or something. Maybe instead of putting it back into an outlet, I'll just do something kind of like uh, people do with the Sonoff modules. You know, I brought this out because I'm getting ready to put my Christmas lights up. And I use a uh, one of these Sonoff ESP modules to uh, control my Christmas lights via a extension cord that I cut in half and put one of these in the middle of. So maybe I'll do something like that. Let me know. Let me know what you think. And uh, if you already subscribe, thank you. I appreciate it. And if you're not subscribed, eh, maybe give me a shot. You know, I put up videos every week or so. 
all different stuff projectors usually but also some of my electronic stuff so as always thank you for watching